Golden State Warriors are demonstrating in this series why they are the team to beat this postseason. In Game 2, the Dallas Mavericks had a commanding lead going into the second half. The Warriors were able to come back and win decisively due to strong play from Otto Porter and surprisingly, Kevon Looney, who's not really known for scoring the basketball very much. He traditionally has been seen as a excellent rim protector and an agitator in the paint. Steve Kerr made an excellent adjustment, recognizing that game two was becoming a three-point shooting contest. He made the decision to start attacking the basket and to play through Kevon Looney. This worked because the Dallas Mavericks were not making their threes, although, although they just kept shooting the threes and the Warriors were attacking the basket and two points at a time with consecutive three-point shots missed by the Dallas Mavericks, they were able to close out the larger deficit that they were facing. And by, by the time we got to the fourth quarter, I believe the game was almost tied up or even. Otto Porter also played a really good game. He had 11 points, seven rebounds, four assists, one steal, and one block. And this type of productivity from a bench player is invaluable. Fast forward to game three, we get to witness an amazing performance by Andrew Wiggins, both on the offensive end and on the defensive end. When you look at a player like Andrew Wiggins, whose career has an unfolded in this very interesting way, you see a player that could easily be overlooked on a different kind of team or be seen as a glorified journeyman. And we can name at least four of these players on the Golden State Warriors. I've already mentioned Otto Porter and Kevon Looney, but we could also talk about Gary Payton II, and you could even make a case for Jordan Poole being somewhat of a glorified journeyman. What these players show us is just how much Steve Kerr believes in all of his players and in utilizing way more of his bench than any other coach in the NBA and not relying too heavily on one superstar. A lot of teams that have a player like Stephen Curry will rely heavily on that player to win games. And when that player gets injured or is unable to play for whatever reason, it's almost impossible for the team to rally and win games without them. But that's not how Steve Kerr rolls. First off, regardless of who's on his team, he's going to attempt to teach you how to shoot the three. From the cleaning crew all the way up to Stephen Curry, Steve Kerr will teach you how to shoot the three if you're interested in learning how to shoot. Secondly, and this may be because of the role that he played during his career, he doesn't discount the ability of a player that other teams would overlook or would not give a platform to really shine. If we think back to Steve Kerr's career, we know what he was used for. He was used to shoot the three and to help the team to win when other teams were focusing heavily on the superstar like Michael Jordan. That's probably the best example that we could use. Steve Kerr was open because they were paying attention to Scotty. They were paying attention, of course, to Michael Jordan. Steve Kerr, being that he was kind of undersized, especially in the beginning, they weren't paying attention to him, but he was always ready to shoot the three. Perhaps during his career, he was hopeful that maybe he could contribute more than that. And then he comes into contact with a player who at least initially was similar to him in stature in terms of kind of being undersized, being a smaller guy, and Stephen Curry. And he turned a player who resembled him in some ways into the Michael Jordan of the team and showed that you could take a player who could again be overlooked. And we know Stephen Curry initially in his career, people did not see what he was going to become and make them a true star in the NBA. And he treats all of his players in this way. And this is, in my opinion, the genius of Steve Kerr and his approach to coaching basketball. Because the truth of the matter is, if you're on an NBA team, that is a clear indication that you are better than a lot of people that wanna play basketball. They say something like less than 2% of people in the world actually have the physicality and the ability to play in the NBA. And Steve Kerr recognizes that if you're there, there's something that you can contribute. He's there to bring that out of you, to amplify your talent, and to give you an opportunity. And because of this, they have so many offensive weapons on this team. You can try to prepare for them, but it's not going to be like preparing for other teams. 
With other teams, you're going to have to prepare for one or two guys and maybe, maybe a third guy will get off. But you're not expecting Gary Payton Jr. to be the guy that comes off the bench and drops 30 on you. And so a team like this one is always going to present a challenge, even for the best teams in the NBA. Andrew Wiggins is a player who I remember hearing about first in his um, Minnesota days. And there was some drama around him because Minnesota chose to give Andrew Wiggins this huge extension. It appeared that they weren't willing to give that money to Jimmy Butler. And some people remember that practice that he was at, where I guess the owners or some executives were there and Jimmy Butler screamed, you need me, you need me. And he was just dogging everybody. He's a solid player. He's extremely reliable. Guaranteed in any game, Andrew Wiggins is going to get you 15 points, seven rebounds, maybe a block or two, maybe a steal or two, and a couple of assists. And he doesn't turn the ball over very much. He's very efficient with the basketball. So a player like that is valuable to any team because you always want players like that to round out the team and to support your superstars. But isolated, most people would agree that the Minnesota Timberwolves made a mistake in giving Andrew Wiggins the extension instead of Jimmy Butler because Jimmy Butler is a more impactful player and leader than Andrew Wiggins. But on a team like the Golden State Warriors, Andrew Wiggins is able to find the role that suits him best and blossom under a system created by Steve Kerr that is designed to amplify the talents of players who would essentially be the fourth, fifth, or sixth option on a different team. Steve Kerr has implemented a system and has buy-in from his superstar, Stephen Curry, that values the contribution of any and every player on that bench they both understand that if you can get a winning effort and this type of productivity out of a player like Wiggins or Gary Payton II or Jordan Poole or Kamingo or Looney or Otto Porter or Juan Toscano Anderson, this makes Stephen Curry's job that much easier. It allows him to play with a certain kind of flow. It allows him to rest and to not be under so much pressure, which thereby helps him to be better throughout each game, especially in a seven game series where it can be exhausting if all that pressure is put on you to make sure that your team wins. And we can see that with Luka Doncic. We can see that with the injuries that John Morant has faced and managing your superstars minutes and managing expectations across the entire team is one of the things that is going to become more and more of a growing concern as time goes on, because we can see that the wear and tear on these marquee players makes them somewhat of a liability by the time you get to that hundredth game in the season. And once we're at this point in the playoffs, it's possible that you've played almost a hundred games. Much respect to Andrew Wiggins for the game he played last night and how well he's played throughout the postseason, but particularly in this series, how he's really <laughs> exhausting Luka Doncic. So by the time they get to the end of the game, it looks like Luka is totally gassed. And respect to Kevon Looney and Otto Porter and even Gary Payton II. These guys play with a lot of intensity, a lot of passion. And as much as I really hate to say it, because like I said, I'm a huge LeBron James fan. And I think back to those series between um, the Cleveland Cavaliers and the Golden State Warriors. I really feel like the, the Golden State Warriors are going to win this year. This is their championship to lose at this point and it will be interesting to see what happens in the finals because it's pretty much clear to everyone that the Mavericks are not going to be able to win four games in a row. The um, Golden State Warriors are likely to win this series. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, comment whether you agree with me or not, and don't forget to share if you care.